So we welcome back into the studio Dr Yasmin Probst, our resident dietitian, and she is also a senior lecturer at the University of Wollongong and a researcher at the Illawarra Health and Medical <coughs> Research Institute. Welcome back, Yaz. How are you both? Hi, well, thank Yay. you, Yaz. How are you? How did you survive school holidays? Oh, only just, only just. Yeah. <laughs> April Free Day 2 today for oh. the kids, so oh. we're extending Extend it out in the those rain. holidays, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so today we're going to continue our journey through the vitamins. So we've do- gone through A, B1, B2, and today it's B3. Yay. So looking at niacin. Right. Yeah. Tell us all we wanted to know. So niacin, the B vitamins all have a very similar function in the body, but niacin in particular, um, it helps the nervous system and we need to also ensure it for helpful, healthy digestive function um, and for our skin to look as lovely as it can do. Mm -hmm. Um, But in particular for digestive function, because we are talking food, um, it helps to convert foods into glucose. So essentially that's the component that gives us energy um, and keeps us all going and functioning properly. So it's it's really quite an important little um, component in our foods. But if we don't have enough of it, Um, then we're at risk of deficiency, which is actually quite rare these Mm. days, but still popping up occasionally. And with the deficiency of niacin, you actually end up with what's called pellagra. And you basically have the symptoms of, you know, sun sensitivity, dermatitis, dementia and diarrhoea, or what they call the three Ds. Mm, And unfortunately, long term, there's also a fourth D. You can almost guess what that would be. Oh, dear. The big one. Death. Death. Mm. So that's all due to a a deficiency in niacin. Deficiency in niacin, that's Mm. right, yes. Mm. Thankfully, not as common as it used to be, so... Um, as long as we keep up with those foods, so our food sources like our poultry, peanuts and brown rice and avocado, they're quite nice sources, mm. then we should be quite okay for niacin in our diet. That was just mm-hmm. my next question. Where are we going to find niacin? Beat you to you it. Beat me to it. <laughs> so avocados, brown rice, poultry. Poultry, oh, yeah. Sounds like a nice combination yeah, together, actually. Yeah, and peanuts, mm. so a nice satay chicken. Oh, mm. beautiful. Yeah, mm. or a toasty with avocado and chicken, mm. by wow. the way. Works well. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I didn't notice the word pellagra. It's not one you hear very often, but there are cases, and there was a it was a case written up in the MJA in two thousand and fourteen. Mm. So it, it still is around, but probably most doctors in this day and age wouldn't really come across it very often. Probably just more um, in their sort of historical studies. And I did notice that it comes from an Italian word mm. pelle agra, which means angry skin, oh. and that's that sort of dermatitis rash. And they had photos of people with it you know in the sort of turn of the century where it was probably more common and you get this particular sort of like a a necklace kind of rash around your neck as well as on your face Mm. and hands but it had this distinct pattern which was quite fascinating wow Mm. so no hiding that you were suffering well you have to need a high collared shirt i suppose you could actually hide that (laughs) but Mm. thankfully as you say not very common today with our you know fresh food and available nutrition in particular in western countries like australia we have quite a nice food supply Mm. here and Those are quite popular food items that you can source it from as well. So Mm. we should be okay most of the time as long as we eat a bit of a variation in our dietary pattern. Mm. So, Mm. yeah, that should be fine for us. But there have been a few links as well of um, niacin to to birth defects. Yes. Um, It's popped up in a couple of studies that I've seen. I was at a conference actually quite recently where they spoke about um, the pedigrees of various families and birth defects coming through such as cleft lip and club foot and so forth, things that we don't hear about as often. Um, But unfortunately, all of these studies linked back to, well, assumptions and single cases and others to primarily mouse studies. Mm. And it's unfortunate that some of those mouse studies do get blown out of proportion. Yeah. Um, so we assume. This time last year, I was actually at the Australian Medical Writers Association and I was at a, a workshop about interpreting scientific information. And she used a case that had come out in the media the week before, which is that case that you're referring to about the vitamin B3, which is the niacin uh, research that uh, the Victor Chang Institute had done and the media release came out and many journalist houses, including the ABC, jumped on it and went, ah, hope for miscarriage women taking vitamin B3. And it was a study looking at the genetic defects that are, are very rare mm. that are linked to miscarriage. And it was really, as you just said, yes, it was an experiment in mice that they were just looking and this had found an association. And it was so, so pre um, anything in use in, in public and... You know, I guess that's an example of where we see, we read things in the media and people can jump to conclusions. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And in particular, I mean, there are some mouse studies where there are clearer links between what's found in the animal model and yeah. what's found in the human model. But this particular one, that was really, really far-fetched. 
and a lot of people thought they had to go out and start supplementing B3 and that's really not the case. Mm-hmm. So pregnant women do not need to supplement B3 specifically to avoid birth defects. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. that's that was very much misinterpreted information. Mm. In fact, B3 is available and probably very few people should be taking it. In fact, from my understanding is that it was used at some point uh, exploring uh, cholesterol and um, it, ma- it is linked with high density lipoprotein, so the good cholesterol. Uh, it's the, uh, the high dose form called nicotinamide or um, nicotinic acid is linked to increasing high density lipoproteins, which is good, but the side effects are quite significant. Mm, definitely, yes. Um, I mean, that's, that's about the level of um, involvement there that we have with cholesterol and vitamin B3. Uh, but the general recommendation would be just to keep eating a balanced diet mm. um, and make sure that you keep a balance of all your food food groups um, so that you should be okay with all of those nutrients, mm. which is a nice little um, lead into. We're also currently in the middle of, or the beginning mm. of National Nutrition Week. Oh, happy um, National Nutrition so another, Week. Another health another week that week. we're <laughs> celebrating. Mm. Um, but this year we're looking at the Try, Try for Five campaign. So Nutrition Australia are really promoting that mm. one. And a lot of the local areas have got some events happening. I haven't seen any as yet for the Highlands, so there might be some still popping up later in the week that are hidden away for now. Um, But, I mean, there's always something that we can link our food intake with Mm. in the Highlands, particularly. I mean, we've got the Barrel Classic coming up this weekend. Mm. We need to make sure that we stay hydrated for that if we're in the race or even if we're spectating. It's meant to be quite nice weather. (laughs) Yelling and screaming from the sidelines, you need to be hydrated. Definitely. So, um, Yes, just tell us, what do they mean by try for five? So we're looking at aim, oh, increasing our intakes of vegetables to five serves. A day. Um, a day, yep. that's right. And that's across the board. So, yes, for children and for adults, obviously the serving sizes would be slightly different. But the main aim is really to try and increase them slightly from where you're up to at the moment. So if you don't consume very many vegetables, consuming some additional vegetables. Mm-hmm. Jumping from none to five is probably unrealistic and you won't maintain that. I know I always have a problem with actually determining what is a serve, mm. but on the link that you sent through to me with the that Nutrition Australia have put um, the website together, so I think it is tryfor5.org.au. Does that sound right? I believe so. Yeah, it actually gives you a bit of a um, indication, a rundown, yeah. an indication of what a serving size is, because I never know if a carrot, for example, is a serving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's roughly one cup of raw vegetables. So your salad vegetables, you'd have one cup of those as one serve or a half a cup of cooked vegetable, which can be difficult to translate from the whole piece of vegetable comparison Mm. to when you've chopped it up in front of you. But yeah, there are some really nice guidelines on the Nutrition Australia website um, and of course the Try for Five campaign as well Mm. that can help people along. And is that also us trying to for five, but five different coloured vegetables? Oh, five different colours are even better, definitely. Mm. I think we've spoken about that in the past. Mm. So the more colour you can have in um, the vegetables and the fruit that you eat, the more nutrients you are getting from those different sources as Mm. well. Mm. That's always beneficial for us. Mm. It's a good thing to always remember, isn't it, to have at the forefront of your mind? Yeah. Eat more vegetables. Yes, indeed. Mm. I, my father had his 85th birthday on the oh, weekend. That's right. And I had a dinner party for, or a lunch for 18 octogenarians. Mm. And I did a huge big, uh, it was quinoa on the bottom, and then it was roasted vegetables of every kind. Beautiful. And as I was chopping them up, I was thinking of you, Yasmin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it had capsicums and zucchinis and yeah, yum. cauliflower and pumpkin everything it was just the most beautiful color mm. so i thought well these 85 year olds will live to 95 now mm. if i have anything to do with it <laughs> and there's also the, the clear link um with mental mental health and That's, cognition yes. in terms of the vegetable intake mm. so it's beneficial on all causes mm. um, and for all people it's and plus they taste so good too yeah so they do why not <laughs> and I, i've got to say cutting them up as you're making and and i've been trying to be a little more mindful which i know we're going to talk about cutting up the vegetables it does make you feel better as as the cook, I think, you, see, you think you bring all this goodness mm. into this food that you're cooking and sort of yeah. made me feel quite good. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, that actually leads quite nicely into um, what we're going to speak about next, which is the idea of mindful eating. Um, and that is one of the components of mindful eating. Mm. But it was linked to a recent piece that I saw in the conversation about mindful meditation and the cognitive benefits that you can have there. Mm. And they actually were reporting on a randomised control trial where they compared mindful meditation practice with just a generic relaxation practice and found improvements in cognitive tasks in these particular participants. Mm. Um, 
and I thought, oh, wow, that's it's something that I've been trying to embrace more recently, um, trying to meditate more often. And it's not difficult to do. I always thought it was really quite challenging, but it's not. And you feel so refreshed afterward. I'm not sure whether either of you have tried meditation before. How long do you need to do it for? It varies. I think it needs to fit just into your normal yes. pattern. Mm. So you can start with five minutes or go right through until half an hour. Mm. Just a do, matter of Do you time. use an app to do it? On your phone? Yes. I did, yes. yes. I started off with a guided meditation yes. app. Yep. Um, and now I'm at the point where I just use some some lovely tunes or mm. sounds, depending on what mm. I feel like that day. Because I remember, mm. I'm going to say about two years ago, I downloaded an app thinking I need to bring this into my day because I do know it's got fabulous benefits for working memory and, you know, it, it really is pro- has pro- Restorative, proven yeah. to be so good for you. So I remember thinking, right, I'll use this guided. I can't even think what the app was called now, but um, another friend had recommended it. And uh, I just never got started. No, you never got started. <laughs> never got yeah. started. I never thought. Well, I, could, I always thought, no, this is not mm. the right time to do this. Well, I think it is the time thing. That's why yeah. I asked how long you need to do it for. Because I've done it at the end of a yoga session and then just gone straight to sleep on the ground. Very restorative. Yeah. Uh, but I always think that if I have to find half an hour, I'll just never find it. But mm. you can actually do it and from the article you sent, you do it for yeah. short periods of time. Yeah. Yeah. And even in workplaces, they're suggesting yes. people just sort of, you know, zone out a little behind yeah. their screens or turn their screens off and just find five or ten minutes and that can be equally as good. Yeah, I only do ten minutes at most. Mm. Um, it's, you know, with fitting everything else into the yeah. day. I've yeah. got my ten-minute spot where I can do that and I'm actually trying to encourage my um, team at work, if they ever listen to this, <laughs> to try and do some meditation as part of our team meetings that mm. we do regularly. Mm. So they all looked at me quite oddly when I suggested that the the week um but i will get there i will persist and yes. yeah. you can report will, back we will meditate yeah. mindfully yeah. as a team yeah. yes. so tell us how how that links to mindful eating well it's a little bit easier i think um so mindful eating is about being in the moment and appreciating the foods that you're consuming and your feelings and your responses of the body to the foods that you are consuming as well mm. um and I actually found a Harvard study about this mindful eating uh, pattern and they have an eight-step process that they've broken it down to. So that's a nice, perfect way to describe it. But it even begins when you're purchasing the food. So in the shop, looking around at where are you primarily purchasing those products in your trolley from and what health benefits do they have for you? So are you purchasing lots of fruits and vegetables and from those aisles around the outside of mm. the supermarket or are you mainly purchasing from those inner aisles where there are highly processed foods mm. and thinking about what effect that would have on your body and then moving on from there um, to actually coming to the table with an appetite as opposed to being hungry so you aren't just trying to fill this gap in your stomach but you're actually appreciating the food in front of you and thinking about what's going into your mouth and into your stomach as opposed to just quick 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 yeah. eat, eat, gulp it down. Do. Yeah. Yeah. down yeah i've got to get out of here and that seems to be what society's doing these mm. days we, we are forgetting about our food and you know appreciating what's what's in front of mm. us and just sitting in front of the tv mi- not even mindfully we're just eating food's just going in by habit more than mm. by what we're not valuing the whole process yeah. in itself yeah but starting with small portions so they recommend nine inches which is roughly 23 centimeters as your maximum size of the plate i'm not sure what the science is around that but i'll have a look into that mm. maybe for another another week um to have a chat about that but it's yeah, mm. not all that much on your plate. Mm. I mean, that's starting. So it, it's not necessarily that if you're still hungry after that, you can't. don't just have to stop at that point. But start small. Start small yeah. and actually enjoy what's on your plate because with a smaller portion, you can actually enjoy it more. But appreciating your food as well. So what you've got in front of you, bringing all your senses with you to the table. So appreciating the textures, smells and sounds. But taking small bites and chewing very carefully. Mm. So they're recommending about 20 to 40 chews to actually release all of those different flavours that mm. come through in the foods because you do actually start some of your digestion in your mouth. Yeah. So saliva, that process yes. of chewing really slowly and carefully can help with that digestive process. And I've seen it before. A lot of people, they wolf their food down. Mm. A couple of chews. Teenage boys. Down boys. Quick, sides. It's exactly, mm. exactly. But that naturally will slow down your eating process, which is the main guiding principle of the whole process. Mm. So really appreciating what's in your mouth, thinking about what you're tasting, what you're seeing, what others are doing around you, and even taking five minutes to just eat before you then start chatting with others that Mm. are at the table with you as well. Mm. I mean, I definitely encourage conversations over dinner um, with the family to see what's happening, but just those five minutes of quickly, of 
not quickly necessarily, but of thinking about mm. what are we he- eating here? Mm. Can we taste all of those different herbs and spices that we've put into this meal? Really Can we de- taste the different deconstructing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you actually have a go at that, it's it's an interesting process. And I find I naturally have slowed down my eating across the board just by habit but it it does take a little bit of time if you are someone who naturally eats fast yeah no it's fascinating it's making Mm. more of the eating more of an event in itself and Mm. not just a a process yeah it's exactly savoring every mouthful Mm. isn't it really thinking about and And having an awareness of food of her putting a knife and fork down as well Mm. in between not sort of poised to shove the next mouthful in yes yeah which automatically makes you slow down and you can do your chewing in between Mm. (laughs) that's right yeah yeah. Oh, that sounds good. I'm mm. going to do that because mm. I think that the one, the one and only time I can remember doing that is that when I went to Tetsuya's, mm. a very yeah. expensive restaurant, yeah. Yeah. and they serve the tiniest little pieces, mm. morsels of stuff, but the, the taste sensations that are in it, mm. each little morsel has got about eight different things in it. And I remember like, well, largely because it was so expensive and trying to make the most of it, but savouring that and having a, quite a mind-blowing experience yeah. of actually... A, different parts of your mouth as you would know have different taste sensations and it was amazing i think I, we ate at um locally here at biosha once and i had carrot sorbet as a dessert mm. and that's again another it's an unusual combination mm. but yeah when you have those food experiences where you're like oh wow this is such quite a different. different taste and a different texture to what i would normally associate with that vegetable mm. you know, like it's a really it's an interesting yeah. thing to do. And as part of the Stephanie Alexander Garden Program, that I think I've, I talk about a bit on the program, that's something we do when we sit down to eat with the children um, in the classroom after we've all cooked. That's one thing we really do is think about what we're eating. And that, that's one way of integrating, you know, um, English into the program. So we'll talk, people go around and say, you know, what does this text, what does that, that food what does it taste like? What does it, you know, what do the colours of this Get to remind describe you of? Because mm-hmm. we had something we made the other day that was just a really beautiful, it had lots of yellows and oranges. I'm trying to think if it was a, it was a beetroot and pumpkin salad. Oh, lovely. And it really looked like a sunset mm. or a sunrise and the kids were sort of saying what beautiful colours they were. Mm. So it's interesting to stop and really reflect on what you're eating. Mm. And it's trying to find those words to describe food. Absolutely. It become quite difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I definitely can't find the, the words at all times. <laughs> yeah, and, and just trying to describe flavours for children oh, too. For sure. You know, they might know something salty, but they actually can't put their finger mm. on that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Actually, yeah. my daughter was describing something on the weekend, which made me laugh a little bit. We were having sushi, um, and so she put some soy sauce, and then she said, oh, no, this tastes too much like maple syrup. <laughs> yeah, and no you one can no. quite explain that one. <laughs> no. so my daughter's a bit of a special case, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It is interesting. Fast food's really taken on just that in our lives, where we sort of sit down, you know, race through mm. the food pro- eating process as just that, and we sort of miss the real meaning of it. Really, mm. yeah. Well, that's great. And, and that's that really, I think, um, is also associated with actually enjoying a meal with other people yes i think that's a big part of of cooking and eating yes. is that is the sitting down and sharing that together mm. and that's really important i yeah. think that's something that people I are forgetting do to do there's a lot of eating while driving mm. eating in front yes. of the television that that yeah. social aspect is yes. starting to fall off the wayside fall yeah. by the wayside and it's just it's so important mm. and perhaps a little less probably in my case and yours i'm sure megan a little less talking as well <laughs> talking as you say eating yeah. chewing thinking Mm. then talking yes <laughs> very true yeah, yeah. excellent oh, lots of food for thought indeed mm. well thank you so much yes that was great and so yeah. next time we have you back uh you'll be talking about vitamin we're in the middle of the b still i think yes we are we are um well actually there's a bit of a gap in the b vitamins so we might actually talk about why we have a gap okay mm. and what a few happened? missing bees. What's what's gone wrong there? Gone yeah. <laughs> the bees have gone missing. Okay. Well, we'll have you back in a fortnight's time and look forward to reporting back on our mindful eating. Mm. Yeah. Love excellent. to hear about it. Now, what song would you like to hear today? So it'd be good to hear George Ezra's Shotgun. Oh, it's a bit no. of a sing-along yeah. song for us in the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love this song. Sue's favourite too. It is. It's the top of the charts at the Highland FM 107, uh, 107.1, <laughs> a healthy chat. Well done, yes. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks Thank so much. Thank you. For See you in a fortnight. You. Bye-bye.